What's going on, Flix Talkers? Welcome back to another movie reaction. Now, this time we are checking out 1989's Driving Miss Daisy. Now, this one is starring Morgan Freeman, Jessica Tandy, Dan Aykroyd. It is the winner of four Academy Awards, including Best Picture for 1989. Now, happy Black History Month, by the way, guys. We are in the month of February for 2024, and I think it's very important, especially in the month of February, to highlight Black voices. Now, that means actors, directors, producers, anyone that's really putting out great films, especially people of color, I think it's important to highlight on channels like mine. Now, before we get into it, guys, you let me know down in the comments below when was the first time that you saw Jiving Miss Daisy? Is it a big one? Is it deserving? of the best picture of 1989. I would love to hear your thoughts down below of your favorite moments of the movie. And make sure to hit that big thumbs up before we get into it to support the channel. Consider subscribing today for more reactions like this. I don't know anything about this movie. I know about Driving Miss Daisy, the cover. I know about the phrase Driving Miss Daisy. I just don't know anything about the story of it. So enough talking. Let's get directly into the film. My first time watching 1989's Driving Miss Daisy. Yeah, Someone got their gas and their brake pedal mixed up. That's a nice car, too. Okay, I don't know what year we're in yet, but based on what everybody's wearing, the style of kind of car, the model of it, maybe the 40s, early 50s? Oh, it's based on a play. Okay, cool. You know, it's a miracle you're not laying at Emory Hospital or decked out at the funeral parlor. It was the car's fault. Mommy, you had the car in the wrong gear. I did not. Okay, she had it in the wrong gear then. Mama, cars don't behave. They are behaved upon. Think what you want, I know the truth. <laughs> Hope, what I'm looking for is somebody to drive my mother around. Your mother? Mm -hmm. How come she ain't hiring for herself? Well, it's a difficult situation. Oh, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, Says she doesn't go on around the bend a little bit. Well, now, that, that'll happen as they get on, you know. Oh, no, she's all there. Oh, oh that's good. Too much there's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> My mother's a little high strung. The fact is, you'd be working for me. She can say anything she likes, but she can't fire you. And don't you worry nothing about it, Mr. Wooden. I remember when I was a little boy, back down there on the farm above making where I come from, I used to wrestle hogs to the ground during killing time. Ain't that hog got away from me yet. You calling my mama a hog or what? All right, so hence driving Miss Daisy. All right. I'm sure she ain't gonna like this. What I do not want, and absolutely will not have, is some some chauffeur sitting in my kitchen, gobbling up my food, running up my phone bills. On Forsyth Street, we couldn't afford them, and we did for ourselves. That's still the best way, if you ask me. Them? Afford them? You sound like Governor Talmadge. What? Bully, what a thing to say. I'm not prejudiced. Aren't you ashamed? China. No, I know the Miss Idella wants back down there in Macon. Could sing? What you talking about? I'm talking about this woman has some lungs. Fat, too. Woman about big as that stove over ya. Yeah. Don't talk to Idella. She has work to do. Oh, so he's also doing some handiwork around the house, huh? Oh, he's gonna overstep his boundaries doing all this. I know it's out of the kindness of his heart, but mm -mm, she's a stubborn woman. Morning, Miss Daisy. You leave my flower bed alone. I could put you in some tomatoes, some butter beans. Some... If I want a vegetable garden, I'll plant it myself. Yes. I understand it too. She doesn't want to feel helpless. I get it. I, I totally understand it. But this is where the butting of the heads is gonna happen. Wow, 1896, fifth grade. Uh, <clears throat> Idella said we running short on coffee and Dutch cleanser. We are. I'm fixing to go to the Piggly Wiggly on the trolley. On the trolley? 
Well, ain't that what Mr. Worthen done hire me for? That's his problem. Well, <laughs> a fine, rich Jewish lady like yourself ain't got no business dragging herself up the steps of no trolley can, no grocery store bags. I was born on Forsyth Street, and believe you me, I know the value of a penny. My brother Manny brought home a white cat one day, and Papa said we couldn't keep it because we couldn't afford to feed it. My sister saved up money so I could go to school to be a teacher. We didn't have anything. Yes. But you're doing all right now. <laughs> Oh, he is persistent. Where are you off to this morning, Miss Worthen? Oh, just a little shopping. Especially since I don't do nothing but sit in your kitchen on a stool all day. Mm-hmm. Better get in that car before these ladies in the neighborhood start talking trash about you. <laughs> Did you see her walk into the store? Shoot. I thought she was rich. You're... You're speeding, I can see it. Oh, no, Miss Daisy, no. We're only doing about 19 miles an hour. I like to go under the speed limit. But the speed limit's 35, yeah. The slower you go, the more you save on gas. My husband taught me that. I don't think so. <laughs> Look out, there's a little girl behind that car. Yes, I see her. I got it. Pull in right here. God, Coca-Cola's been around forever, huh? You stay right here by the car. Yes. And you don't have to go telling everybody my business. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yes, sir. It's me. Guess where I'm at? I, I just drove your mama to the stove. Oh, well, you know, she she flap around some, but she all right. She in the stove. No, oh, Lord, she, she just looked out the window and seen me on the phone, so <laughs> she probably going to throw a fit right there at the checkout counter. Good job, Good job, Steve. Nice to see you. I'd get myself in. Hurry up out here. Yeah. You had the car parked right in front of the front door of the temple like I was the Queen of Romania. Everybody saw you. Didn't I tell you to wait for me in the back? Well... Yes, yeah, sir. It made me look like a fool. A GD fool. Miriam and Beulah and them, I could see what they were thinking when we came out of services. But I was trying to pretend I was rich. Well, you is rich, Miss Daisy. No, I'm not. And nobody can say I put on airs. Miss Daisy, if I was to ever get my hands on what you got, shoot, I'd be shaking it around for everybody in the world to see. That's vulgar. Don't talk to me. It's interesting, like, so early on, we're getting the different perspectives, the Jewish community, the black community as well, deep rooted in, in a lot of hatred, a lot of bigotry, a lot of stereotypes as well. It's interesting. It's very interesting kind of this dialogue going back and forth, especially when it comes to money. He's talking about how he would show it off. She's talking about how she came from nothing. She has something now, and but she doesn't like to show it off. It also shows you even at an older age, you could still care about what people think about you. I wanted you to be here when he comes. I wanted you to hear it for yourself. He's stealing from me. Hulk, are you sure? I don't make empty accusations. I have proof. What proof? This. I found this hidden in the garbage pail under some coffee grounds. Oh, I knew. I knew there was something funny. They all take things, you know. So I counted. You counted. And then I went into the pantry. She can't be serious. <laughs> and I knew right away. There were only eight cans of salmon. I had nine. Didn't she say she's not prejudiced? And then she says, they all steal? What? <laughs> what? Uh, Miss Daisy, yesterday while you was out visiting, I went and ate a can of your salmon. Now, I, I, I know you said eat the leftover pork chops, but, well, they was kind of stiff. So I, I stopped by the Piggly Wiggly this morning and I got you another can. You oh my. Pants for here? Yes, thank you, Hulk. Yes. I'm surprised she even noticed. I've got to get dressed now. <clears throat> Bye, son. He did take something that wasn't his, but he replaced it right away. Now, what do y'all think about that? Does that cancel it out? I think that's fine. It's not a big deal. The fact that she noticed right away that a can was gone. <laughs> It's kind of like OCD, like crazy, but he brought it up, squashed. 
I understand, though. For her, it's the principle. It's a fact of the matter. He steals a can of car sardines. Next, he's still in the car. <laughs> you know, that's what she's thinking. Here, we done been out this cemetery three times this month already. They ain't even the 20th yet. It's good to come in nice weather. No, oh, yes, and you sure right about that. You know, I think you the best widow in the state of Georgia. <laughs> Foolish owners pestering me to have the staff out here tend to this plot. Mm -hmm. Perpetual care, they call it. Yes, well, don't you do it. It's right to have a member of the family looking after you. Oh, Foolish will have me in perpetual care for I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> Hulk, yeah. put that azalea on Leo Bowers' grave. All right. I know it's two rows over that way. You'll see the headstone, Bower. Mm -hmm. But what's the matter? Hmm? No, nothing. Nothing. Nothing wrong. Nothing mad at all. Bower. Yeah. So now, what that look like, Miss Daisy? Oh, he can't read. He can't read. Well, I'm talking about I can't read, man. What? I can't read, Miss Daisy. Then how come I see you looking at the paper all the time? Well, that's, that's just it. I just be looking. Well, I, I kind of dope out what's going on from the pictures sometimes. You know your letters, don't you? Oh, yes, ma'am. I know my ABC is pretty good. I just can't read. If you know your letters, then you can read. You just don't know you can read. I taught some of the stupidest children God ever put on the face of this earth, and all of them could read well enough to find the name on the tombstone. Dang. Oh, yes, I'm a CIA. The name is Bauer. B, 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 Bauer. B? Of course. Uh, 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 uh. What letter sounds like uh? Uh, uh, uh. Aura. B, R, B, R. Aura. Even sounds like Bauer, doesn't it? It sure. Do, Miss Daisy. I go find it. <laughs> That's so funny. That took me back to school too, man. When I was learning my ABCs as a, I don't know, kindergarten. I don't know. When do they teach you that? Kindergarten, first grade? It has to be kindergarten, preschool. You just sound out the letters, right? That's unfortunate, man. Not knowing how to read. Oh, your whole life not knowing how to read. That's hard to believe, but for some, it's a reality. I'm sure the grown man too. That's not easy to say that you can't read. This isn't a Christmas present. Well, look at that. Ain't nobody never given that book before, Miss Daisy. Zena Method Writing. I always taught out of these. That was a considered gift. I, I, I kind of, I didn't understand what it was uh, to help him write better. I couldn't read what it said on the on the paper. Or teaching him how to write at all. I'm sure he doesn't know how to write. You can't read. Well, you know, she fought me on this one. Yeah, sir. But it's time for a trade. I bet both of you'll miss the old one, though. No, sir. I don't. Oh, come on. You're the only one's been driving it all this time. No, it ain't going nowhere. I done bought it. You didn't. Yes, yeah, sir. I sure did. Already made a deal with Mr. Red Mitchell. Hey, Hudson's a good car. I guess nobody knows that better than you. It's your new one. Miss Daisy don't take to it. Why? Well, I might let her ride in this one from time to time. Mighty nice of you. Well, you know, we do what we can. <laughs> <laughs> I love this Hulk character, man. Morgan Freeman. It's different. It's a lot different than what I've seen. He just seems like a very genuinely happy person. You know, or look at the right, the bright side, you know? It's three after seven. Well, yes, yeah, sir. You said we was leaving at 15 to 8. At the latest, I said. I thought you were leaving at a quarter off. No, oh, she's taking on. Be still. Don't start up with me, Mama. I cannot go to Mobile with you. I have to go to New York for the convention. The convention starts Monday. Okay, they're about to go into the deep south right now. I wonder if we're going to get a little tonal shift of language. Because it's been very PG. Maybe up until now. Did you have the air condition check? I told you to have the air condition check. Yes, yeah, I'm. I got the air condition check. I don't know what for. You don't never allow me to turn it on. <laughs> turn left. Yeah. 
No, right. Turn right. About to get me pulled over, Miss Daisy. I tell her, so do stuff very good. You stuff yourself good. Yes. Hey, boy. Yes, sir. What do you think you're doing with this car? Uh, this is my car, officer. Yes, ma'am. Can I see your registration, please? Any license, boy? Yes, sir. What's his name? Wertheran? Wertham. Wertham. Never heard of that one before. What kind of name is that? It's a German derivation. German derivation. Mm-hmm. Thank you, ma'am. An old nigger and an old Jew woman taking off down the road together. That is one sorry sight. Mm. Once again, I was wondering how hardcore we were going to get with some of the racism and the bigotry. It says Phoenix City, 30 miles. Well, well maybe you read it wrong. I didn't. Stop the car. You took the wrong turn at Old Polite. Well, now nah, you took it with me, Miss Daisy. And you got the mail. I was getting a lunch. Go on back. Oh, they better watch out. These are sundown towns. And disgustingly enough, we still have sundown towns in this country. So. Oh, I don't think good times are coming hoax way. I got to go make water. You should have thought of that back at the service station. I colored can't use the toilet at none of these service stations. Daisy, you know that. We'll be in Mobile soon. You can wait. Damn. No. Now, how you think I feel having to sit up here and ask you, can I go make water like I'm some child? I'd be ashamed. Well, I ain't no child, Miss Daisy. And I ain't just some back of the neck you look at while you going wherever you got to go. I'm a man. I'm yeah, about 70 years old. And I know when my bladder's full. And I might take the key with me, too. Now, that, that, that's all there is to it, now. Let her know. Finally put a foot down. He's like, I'm generally a, a nice, jolly guy, but you know what? You didn't mess with my <laughs> with my pithing schedule now, so. <laughs> Gotta let you know what's up. But this is worse than a horror movie. <laughs> You're a black man in Mobile, Alabama, taking a piss at night in a nice car. And it probably ain't no peaches and cream for her either. I mean, Jewish women, they don't like Jewish, you know, discriminatory against that as well, so. Well, they made it safe and sound. I thought it was going to be a lot worse. From what I've seen in other movies, they show you the nitty gritty. This is a pretty toned down water down version of racism, but it's good so far. It's Mr. Sinclair Harris, sir. My cousin Sinclair? His wife. Jeanette. She trying to hire me. What? She asked me, she said, how they treating you down there, Hope? She said, well, you looking for a change, you know who to call. Said, name your own salary. Did ya? Did it what, sir? Name your salary. No, oh, all go away from here, Miss Worthen. What you think I am? I ain't starting about going to work for no trash or something like her. No, sir. She got you thinking, didn't she? Well, sir, you, you might just say that. Well. How does $65 a week sound? Why? <laughs> sound pretty good, sir. 75 sound better. Ah! <laughs> That's how you ask for a raise, man. You ever have folks fighting over you? Nope. It sure feel good. <laughs> no, you're worth, Hulk. And you got a car payment now, too, so good thing you asked, man. Oh, not much. Look at that now. Ain't, ain't she got a lot of hair? I wonder how she'd get it so shiny. Washes it in mayonnaise. Go on, wait. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, she did. Read it in Life magazine. Don't seem human, do it. Don't seem human. Washed in mayonnaise. Who is she, Big Ed, or what? What happened? You up or something, ain't she?
Adela? Adela? What happened? She had a heart attack? Damn. It's interesting that even though they spent all this time together, he still has to sit in the other room to eat. I'm guessing just because that's the way it was. But you would even think, like, he's in your home. You guys have had a bond, you know what I mean? But I'm sure it's just because that's the way it is, and that's kind of ingrained in her brain, you know? Who is it? Morning, Mr. Hazen. Oh. I learned how to drive on ice when I was delivering milk for the Avondale Dairy. These other folks out there banging into each other like they're in the funny papers. <laughs> I figured your stove was out, so I stopped by the Krispy Kreme. You no, know, you got to have your coffee in the morning. Krispy Kreme? Sweetie, yo. Yeah. That's been around that long? <laughs> no way. Yeah, no good coffee around here since I dealt with that. Adela was lucky. Yes, ma'am. I expect she was. This big mess I got. What's the matter? I might as well not go to the temple at all now. You ain't gonna be able to go to the temple this morning, Miss Daisy. Why not? What in the world is the matter with you? Somebody done bombed the temple. What? Oh, what? I don't believe it. Well, what the policeman just said, I've done. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Once again, you got two walks of life, two different people. Sharing and hatred, though. Prejudice, bigotry, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of nastiness. I remember one time back down there in Macon, 11 years old, I reckon, I had this friend named Apoda. One day there, his daddy was hanging in a tree. Now, just the day before, we'd all been pitching horseshoes, talking about how me and Poda was going to have strong right arms, just like him. Lord, there he was, hanging up yonder in the tree. Had his hands tied behind him. Flies was all over. I tell you, I just threw up right there where I stand. I'm not crying. Why did you tell me that story? Just, just seemed like that air mess back there put me in mind. That's ridiculous. The temple has nothing to do with that. We don't even know what happened. How do you know that policeman was telling you the truth? You never get things right anyway. Now, Miss Daisy, somebody done bombed that temple back down and you know it. Go on, just go on now. I don't want to hear any more about it. Boss. Don't talk to me. Mama, we have to talk about this. Now, you know I believe Martin Luther King has done some mighty fine things. Foodie, if you don't want to go, why don't you just come right out and say so? I want to go, but a lot of men I do business with wouldn't like it. They might snicker a little and call me Martin Luther Worthen behind my back. Maybe I wouldn't hear about certain lunch meetings at the Commerce Club. Old Jack Raphael at Ideal Mills, you know, he's a New York Jew instead of a Georgia Jew. And all the really smart ones come from New York, don't they? Some of the boys might start throwing their business to Jack instead of to old Martin Luther Worthen. When did you get so fired up about Martin Luther King? Time was, I'd have heard a different story. Why, Booty, I've never been prejudiced in my life, and you know it. Okay. Well, why don't you ask Hoke to go with you? Hoke? Don't be ridiculous. He wouldn't go. Ask him and see. Booty said the silliest thing the other day. Bully said you wanted to go with me to this dinner. Did you tell him that? No, I didn't. I didn't think so. What'd be the point? You can hear him whenever you want. I think it's wonderful the way things are changing. Yeah, but are you changing? <laughs> That's what it comes down to. Are you changing? Miss, I don't got a prejudiced bone in my body. <laughs> David. <laughs> Invitation to this here dinner coming to mail a month ago. 
did be you wanted me to go with you, how come you wait till we in the car and on the way before we ask me? What? All I said was Booty said you wanted to go. Next time you want me to go somewhere, you ask me regularly. You don't have to carry on so much. Well, well let's just leave it alone. Honestly. Talk about things change. They ain't change all that much. See? <laughs> Stubborn Miss Daisy. Segregation has placed the whole South socially, educationally, and economically behind the rest of the nation. These millions are called upon to gird their courage to speak out. History will have to record that the greatest tragedy of this period of social transition was not the vitriolic words and the violent actions of the bad people, but the appalling silence and indifference of the good people. Our generation will have to repent not only for the words and acts of the children of darkness, but also for the fears and apathy of the children of light. Mm. Morning, Miss Daisy! Miss Daisy! Hope Hoke, is that Hoke? Yes, Miss me. Oh, you all right? What did you do with my papers? What papers? My papers. I put them out in front so I wouldn't forget them on my way to school. Now, school? What are you talking about? The children will be so disappointed if I don't give them their homework back. Man. God, that dementia set pretty late. She's in her 90s? Miss Daisy. Now, ain't nothing wrong with you. Your mind done took a turn this morning, that's all. You, you, you gonna snap right back quick as you let yourself. I can't. Hulk. Yes. Do you still have that Hudson? You talking about from when I first come here? You no, know, that thing been in the junkyard now I'm on 15 years. I'm driving your next to last car now. 1965 Cadillac. Hulk. Yes. You're my best friend. Oh, go on. Oh. What? You are. You are. Yes. God, oh, that is so sad. <sighs> Man. Do they have to put her in a home? Did she pass? Please take care of yourself, guys. Dementia runs in my family. Please take care of yourself. Happy Thanksgiving, Mama. Look who I brought. Hulk, I thought of you the other morning on the expressway. Yes? I saw an Avondale milk truck. Is that right? Hulk came to see me, not you. Mm. Looks like <laughs> one of her good days. Uh. How are you? I'm doing the best I can. Me too. You didn't eat your Thanksgiving pie, huh? Here, here, here. let me help you. Let me help you. That's good. Wow. That was 1989's Driving Miss Daisy. Okay. All right, guys. So Driving Miss Daisy. I'm so glad I finally got to catch this movie. A lot of people talk about it. Mainly my grandma. <laughs> and I could definitely tell. So it was a slower paced movie. It's only about an hour and 40 minutes. But it definitely kind of dragged on, but not in a bad way. It's more about character development. It's more about the dialogue between these two characters or even, you know, uh, Dan Aykroyd's character as a son. We get a lot of time progression. So things do set in and you get to see how people act over decades. You know what I mean? Not just years, decades. And it's so interesting how a person can just kind of have their mind made up about someone. But then also a little bit of, you know, I don't know. There's a little bit of sliver of hope that kind of creeps in there of someone being a little more understanding. 
But Miss Daisy was still very stubborn, even all the way up to the end, you know, with her son and whatnot. But I think it was after she went to go see Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech in person, she kind of had a little, little mind shift there, you know, about understanding, being a little more tolerant, understanding that we're all one people. And uh, kind of judging people by, once again, you know, the content of their character and not the color of their skin, uh, as MLK did say. So I really did have a good time with this movie because I didn't know what I was in for, to be completely honest. I maybe thought it was going to be, you know, something like this, but I wasn't 100% sure. So that's why I like to go into these movies not knowing a thing about them completely. I do remember, though, you know, oddly enough, that there was an In Living Color sketch about this where they made a parody about Driving Miss Daisy. So I know about the yes -um and all that, you know, uh, the way they spoke and whatnot in the South. And, and, and I did think once we got to the deeper South, Mobile, Alabama, it was going to be, uh oh, you know, uh, territory. But they didn't really take it there, which I can appreciate because I've seen so much of that just over my time of watching film and, and, and different, you know, mediums and whatnot. Uh, so I've seen all of that. I am always one to believe that sometimes you got to show that to kind of get the depth of the situation of the time that we're in. But for some reason, I felt like they played it up perfectly. They didn't need to show that. And even though it was, you know, I'd mentioned a toned down, more watered down version of racism, bigotry and whatnot, it fit. It kind of fit because you you still understood the world that you were living in. You still understood the segregation that was going on around that time, uh, even if not force fed to you, you know, head on like you see in some of these rated R movies. I believe this this had to have been PG. Um, I can only imagine. Yeah, PG. Uh, and it still won a lot of Academy Awards. So that's fantastic because it's more of the feeling that you get uh, as an overall picture and this movie was just put together very very well the time progression once again was very meaningful the conversations between hoke and uh miss daisy were fantastic like it's like timeless like it's it's timeless banter it's timeless writing um it seemed very natural and fluid even the side characters of a dan Aykroyd seemed very uh, everybody really did a great job in this movie i have no gripes with this with this performances whatsoever even from some of the side characters uh i really wanted to look up the um the woman who was working with miss daisy because i feel like i had seen her uh esther roll or role as uh adela that's who she is okay she was in good times i definitely recognize her face yeah she was also in mod too which a lot of people also have talked about on my channel before i've never seen it but she did a great job as well. She did a great job as well, once again. So a lot of characters that I'm introduced to sometimes in these movies aren't A-listers, I guess, or people that I know of. But if they can blow me away, just even doesn't have to be over the top acting, so to speak. You could just They just have to be believable characters. And I think, I think that's kind of what this movie is. If you're really trying to go into something, trying to encapsulate uh, the 40s, 50s, 60s, and I believe 70s of that, you know, that last era, you know, I mean, uh, uh, we saw a jogger and I believe jogging wasn't introduced until the 70s. So um, it was believable. And I really did enjoy this movie. And long story short, I'm going to give Driving Miss Daisy a solid Perfect. five out of five. I thought it was a fantastic film. I definitely want to revisit it. I want to show it to more people. I, uh, um, yeah, I don't know how many, you know, people in my family have seen this. I would love to kind of talk to my grandma or, or my mother about this, even though it did come out in the late eighties, you know, and what impact it had on them possibly, because I want to know always, you know, their, you know, what they felt in those moments, either leaving the theater or, or watching it on home video. So you guys let me know your thoughts on driving Miss Daisy. Uh, I didn't even get to, you know, uh, um, the powerful performance from, uh, uh Jessica Tandy and Morgan Freeman amazing amazing i had mentioned along the way that morgan freeman was a character that um I, i'm not familiar with a, a character like I, I, I'm, I'm thinking maybe in glory 
uh, that I had seen him something similar to this because that was a timepiece. I mean, we're talking about civil, like uh, I don't know if it was civil war. I think it, uh, it was it was in the 1800s, I believe. So late 1800s, but so that's kind of the closest character that I can compare it to. It's just as far as the mannerisms and the way he was uh, with the accent and whatnot. Um, but Morgan Freeman is a legend. I've seen him in so many roles, so believable. And there's always that joke about you've never seen Morgan Freeman young. It's true. <laughs> so I wonder when he started acting because, man, I would love to see young, young acting Morgan Freeman. I've seen pictures of young Morgan Freeman, but never young acting Morgan Freeman. And Jessica Tandy. I don't know this actress. I, I really don't. Um, I got to look her up to see if maybe I'd seen any films of hers prior. I actually take it back. She was in Fried Green Tomatoes, which I have seen. Uh, she's also in Batteries Not Included, which was a movie that I know my parents had watched. I don't think I've seen it. Um, but other than that, I don't know too much of her work, but she did a great job. I can also see her in the movie Cocoon, which is another one a lot of people recommend. So I got to check out some of her previous works. But if you guys had a good time, you guys let me know your favorite moments down in the comments below. And if you guys did appreciate mine, please let me know by hitting that big thumbs up to support the channel. Consider subscribing today for more reactions like this. Also, if you guys are watching this reaction on YouTube and want to watch the full uncensored cut, make sure to click on my Patreon link down in the description below where you guys can join today for a seven day free trial. All right, Flix Talkers, till next one, I'm gone. Peace.